Hello, my lovely fur talks. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the very last video, the last video of the series of visual patterns, the series where we break down visual language into visual patterns so that we can better understand the heuristics of photography and how best to apply them to our work. And of course, as always, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, please go and watch the very, very first video of the series where we break down exactly what visual patterns are, what visual language is, and why you would use them over something, say, like photography rules. All right. First up, I wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much to all of you guys who have tuned in to this series. You know, unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end eventually. And this is the 10th video in this series. So I feel like it's a good place to end it. But you know, the response so far from from all of you guys throughout this entire series has been absolutely amazing. I am so humbled and so grateful that, you know, I've had so much positive feedback from you guys. So many of you have been saying how you know, you've know you taken so many of these lessons and, and uh, distilled them into your own styles and into your own photography and you know got a lot out of this series. And I'm so, so grateful that you know, you've given me your time and attention for the series. And so I really hope it uh, helps you guys in your overall journeys from here on out and that you can really, really put these ideas and these tools to, to good use because they are the core foundations of photography and what makes you a good photographer. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different, something that kind of combines all of the ideas that we've been talking about in this series together. And I wanted to do kind of like a, I guess like an analysis kind of video where I go through my Instagram feed, <laughs> I guess, and I look at just some images and tell you what I'm seeing in terms of visual patterns that are being used in those images. Now, with that being said, you know, everyone's interpretation of photography is always different. And the things that stand out to me, the visual patterns that stand out to me, stand out to me because they will be my style, right? The things that I'm looking for initially, the things that I see first, that in essence is the genesis of my own style. And so if, you know, a pattern that I'm pointing out isn't exactly, you know, first on the list, or maybe I don't point it out at all, you know, don't feel offended or anything like that. It's just that uh, different people will gravitate towards certain patterns first uh, rather than other patterns. And so that's what's going on there. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that one pattern is better than another. It's just, you know, the set of patterns that you gravitate towards is the genesis of your style, right? I'm also not going to be uh, commenting on, you know, th this this whole thing is not about whether the, the image is, is good or, you know, about what the style is or anything like that. It's more about the breakdown of what patterns are being used and, you know, an example of how I might spot the patterns in the real world on, you know, other people's images and stuff like that. It's not a uh, an analysis of the story that the image is trying to tell. It's not an analysis of, you know, the implied meaning or the, you know, the subconscious use of certain uh, devices in the image, right? It's just a very uh, surface level, uh, here is what the patterns that are being used are kind of video, uh, just so that you guys can get used to spotting these patterns for yourself in, 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 uh, in your own photography as well. So without further ado, let's jump into my Instagram feed. All right, so if you are one of the accounts that I follow, I hope it's, uh, it's okay that I might be using your images. Um, so, you know, I haven't been through my feed in quite quite a while, so I don't actually know what's gonna come up. So I'll just pick some some images at random and, and just kind of tell you what's, uh, what's, what's going on here. Uh, and so first off, we have Mr. Joe Allum. So I, I think this, yeah, this is a, a film image. Uh, Joe's getting into film recently, which is kind of cool. So with this image, I think, you know, the first thing that really stands out to me are, are two things, not necessarily a pattern, but the first thing is obviously the, the blurry kind of scooter here. He's obviously used a slower shutter speed in order to give the effect of uh, the the scooter s speeding through the frame, right? And I think that's very, very interesting. But one other thing that really stands out to me uh, first and foremost is the placement, the composition of, of where he's decided and how he's decided to frame this image. So what I mean by that is, you know, you have this person who 
is quite bright in the frame. If you if you like squint for a little bit and you, you try and see like, you know, what, what are the dark parts? What are the bright parts of an image? You can tell that the majority of the frame is actually quite dark, but there is this quite bright person wearing white with a white face mask that stands out quite, um, you know, quite well in this composition. And there's a couple of things here. So the, the, the head is at the, the very, the very middle of the frame, the very center of the frame on the, the left third. And I think that gives it a lot of strength uh, when it comes to the overall placement. And also something that's very interesting uh, that he's done quite well in this image as well is the distance between the front of the wheel and the edge versus you know the back of the scooter to this, uh, to the, the side of or to the back of the image. Is, is quite similar. So this distance and, and this distance are, are quite similar. So it makes the, the, the overall composition quite balanced and central. So when you look at it straight up, you know, okay, I, I, your eyes can, can be oriented quite well, quite quickly. Uh, and I think that gives this image uh, quite a lot of strength. All right, let's scroll down. I don't know what else is um, <laughs> in this that we can uh, we can talk about. Okay, so this one is by Watch Luke, and this is an image that is very obvious. What's going on here, right? Uh, so the big the big one, the big visual pattern here is is obviously this this leading line going down from the very top right of the image to the kind of middle-ish, but it's a diagonal. Uh, and then he's decided to put the edge of the pool, like this line on what looks to be about the bottom third. So from a compositional perspective, you know, he's utilizing rule of thirds, he's utilizing leading lines going into the third. And I think that's very interesting as well. Uh, if you look a little bit closer in the image as well, he's also using frames. So he's got this little uh, little silhouette person here, frames within the, the arches of uh, this building, which is very nice. And he's also got a lot of color contrast as well. So there's a lot of like tealy kind of colors here in the water and in the, the sky. But then he's also got the oranges and a very deep orange of the accents of the building. So you know, a lot of color contrast here as well. And this is interesting when, when you look at this image, right? You look at it and from a visual hierarchy perspective, the thing that catches your attention for me anyway, straight away is this idea of the leading lines. But the leading lines in this case are used to go left. And usually you would use leading lines to lead into a subject. But in this in instance, the subject is actually here. So the leading lines is not leading you into the subject per se, but it is used as a visual element to to make the the overall composition a little bit more visually interesting. So, you know, there's there's a, a couple of devices at play here. All right, just gotta scroll past all these reels. All right, and next we have good old George Hammond. So he is a, a photographer who who lives in Bali and and is absolutely just just crushes the whole Bali. Uh, the Bali thing. It's it's yeah. His his photos are amazing. With this image, there's a lot of things going on here. The very very first thing that comes to my attention is the use of half and half, or the compositional use of halves. So he's obviously got you know the sea on the left, and then this just gorgeous black sand beach on the right, and that just creates a very strong contrast, a very you know a strong contrast of both light and dark, but also of texture, right? Because the sand is very smooth in this image, and the waves are quite textured as well. So there's a lot of things going on when it comes to this this idea of contrast in this image, which is very interesting. But then to to kind of top it all off, he's got this this subject in the middle that breaks that contrast that that stands out enough to to make uh, the subject here stand on its own, to be strong enough to stand on its own, and. With this, we've got a very uh, strong purpley kind of color in the middle that this uh, this character in the middle is um, wearing. And, you know, honestly, especially when it comes to George's work, he could have changed this color, this shirt color in Lightroom or something like that to, to any old color. Uh, so whether or not he kept it as purple for a reason or he changed it to purple, whatever the case may be, choosing to have a color that is so bright 
in a palette that is quite drab and quite dull is a very interesting choice because it pops the person out. It makes the subject stand out. And, and I think that's quite interesting as a visual pattern. He's also got the, the shadow from the person as well. So this as a, as a subject in and of itself is quite interesting because it does stand out quite a lot in, in this, this uh, contrasty half and half kind of composition he's got going on here. All right, next we have Shane Bloom Photography, and this is a very classic landscape type of shot. Here we're using the idea of, of layers, I guess. So in landscape photography specifically, it's not like a pattern per se, but more of a technique that people end up using in that when they're including uh, elements in their composition, they use foreground elements, mid middle ground elements and then background elements. So keeping in mind to have three different layers of elements so that it increases the interest in, in the overall photo. But in this instance, we've got exactly that, right? We've got these kind of yellow flowers in, in the foreground. We've got this very strong subject of these three trees in the middle. And then we've got the background being, you know, the, the very interesting looking sky with the, the sep separation up here. One thing that I'll note in this image is that the, the idea of visual hierarchy is very pronounced, even though he's using elements in all three of these different layers. There's, there's, a, there's a clear hierarchy to what draws your eye in first and then where do your eyes go afterwards. So in this instance, the three uh, shadowed subjects here, the three trees, are the very first thing that catches your attention. That has the highest amount of visual hierarchy in this image, followed by the foreground and then maybe you know the, the background and they may be of a very similar weighting depending on where your eyes go. But the idea is that there is a very strong subject in this image, which makes it quite clear and quite easy to understand. All right, so now we have my friend Mitch Lally. And in this image, we've got a foggy, very ethereal, atmospheric kind of image. There's a couple of things going on in this image. So obviously, your eyes, well, in, in my case, anyway, I wouldn't say, I shouldn't say obviously, because it's not obvious to everyone. It's obvious to me, but it may not be obvious to you. But my eyes are immediately drawn to the figure in the middle. Uh, the figure in the middle is placed on the bottom third of the composition. So a very strong place. Uh, and he's even put that in the middle um, of the bottom third as well, which makes it even stronger in terms of where the composition flows and, and how your eyes will orient themselves towards the subject, right? So in this image, uh, we've got a very ethereal feel with the, the kind of fog and the haze uh, up top and, and around in the middle as well. Uh, we've also got some leading lines, some vanishing point action going on here. So when you shoot roads, like this, when you shoot road straight on, eventually the road will, will kind of, uh, you know, move into a vanishing point and that is your leading line essentially. Uh, especially if you're shooting on a little bit longer of a focal length, it might accentuate it even more. But the leading lines in this case, the road leads up to this very central figure in the middle. What Mitch has also decided to put in is this figure. He could have easily shot this image without this figure in the middle in my opinion, it wouldn't be as strong if he did, but because he has, you know, humans are great elements to use as, um, as visual interest because they provide a sense of scale. Because when you, as a human watching this video, understand how tall other humans are relative to their environment. So immediately you get a very interesting uh, and very understandable frame of reference as to you know how big these trees are that this figure is looking at and so it adds to the very whimsical kind of feel this uh you know almost dreamy nostalgic feel you've got this figure looking up at the fog and i think it's just very very well done when it comes to picking out different patterns uh to throw together to try and tell tell a story all right, so here we've got one from Visit Japan JP, shot by Naoya6555. Uh, this one's very simple, very easy to, to spot what's going on in this composition. It's a temple in the bottom, bottom center. 
uh, framed by two trees. So this person could have easily shot the temple on its own, could have shot it a little bit in so they, they didn't have the trees. But I would argue that the composition would be less interesting uh, if they, you know, versus them shooting it as they have here. So, you know, using more visual patterns in this instance does make, well, in my opinion anyway, the composition a little bit more interesting to look at. But this is a very, you know, very easy image to to understand in terms of overall composition and layout this person has decided to end the temple at the very center of the image which is very interesting and then uh you know have this this corner of the the temple as the center point and this kind of composition especially putting such a a big structure down the bottom and looking upwards you know it gives a sense of uh, scale and grandiosity to the things that it's being framed by, uh, which are the the trees up here. So yeah, very, very interesting uh, compositional image here. All right, so here we have my good friend Demis and Demis shoots a lot of architectural uh, type of images. In this image, he took uh, a picture of a building with his wife, Lucy, in the middle. And I love what he's done in terms of uh, Lucy's head position. So Lucy's head position is almost smack bang in the middle of this image. And, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of things going on in this image to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, you know, you have the, the repetition and the, the texture and the, the pattern of the building itself, which is very, very interesting. And you have the sun flare coming in, which is not a starburst, but just a glow, which I think is quite subtle and quite nice and quite restrained in that way you know a lot of other landscape photographers might jack it up to, to f16 or whatever and, and use a a big uh big starburst to, to kind of add even more to this image but demis has decided to go with a, a lower f-stop and and kind of made the the flare a little bit softer but it does add a lot of visual interest to this image but still you have so many things going on, but because Lucy's head is in the middle of the frame, your eyes are instantly drawn to her first rather than the overall amazing epicness that surrounds her, which is which is quite a uh, interesting compositional tool, as I explained in the composition episode. You know, elements that are in the dead center of an image are the things that our human eyes focus to first, right? So a lot of people might think that putting things in the middle is kind of amateurish, but in my opinion, it's it's not. It's a very strong and very powerful tool to be able to focus your attention immediately, especially when things around it are just so epic, right? I think for me, another thing that was was quite interesting is and I don't know if he if he did this intentionally, but the distance between here, as in the edge of the building and Lucy's head here, so this distance here versus the distance between her head and the bottom of the building here are almost the same. I, if this was me shooting it, I would just gone down a little, a touch, a little bit more. But I love that they're almost the same because it gives the 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 surrounding elements that Lucy is surrounded by just so much more balance and so much more uh, centeredness and and I love that he's done that in this image and in this one we have another one of my good friends Ichban so Ben here has decided to shoot his car uh, right next to a glacial runoff uh, in New Zealand and again he in this instance is deciding to use a central subject a central figure and i think again that's very strong in in an overall composition that is quite uh contrasty so very similar to the uh, george hammond example we had before we've got this very strong contrast of uh white glacial runoff on the right and then you know the the earth the very brown textures of the earth on the left almost at a, a half and half almost there uh but enough to get the idea he's also decided to include the 
road leading to where he parked as well, which gives a leading line into the central subject. But again, because it is such a central subject, your eyes are immediately drawn to what's in the middle, which gives you, again, a sense of what is the hierarchy that's going on here. It's the car, that's the important subject here. But then it's also the epic surrounding that the car is encompassed by. That is also very interesting as well. What I love in this image when it comes to contrast as well is you have the tonality changes of very white and very bright versus you know browns, very dark, very moody. And these two contrasts in terms of texture as well, I think is very interesting, very crumbly kind of rugged looking versus very smooth and uh, you know flowy kind of textures on the right here. I think this is a very interesting compositional image. All right, and I think we'll do one more. Uh, so we've got Pokemon here. Uh, this guy's images are fantastic. I love this guy's images. And in this, there's so many amazing things that I want to talk about because it's it's such a, a, a I guess, a, a masterclass in visual patterns that I love to use. Okay, so for this image, he's got the main two big things for me are leading lines and color contrast. So obviously you have, you know, the first thing that gets your, your, your attention drawn is this big red house, which is absolutely amazing. What a, a gorgeous find in the middle of this, this lush forest. But, you know, red and green are complementary colors. And so they contrast each other quite well. And that's why, you know, it pops out so much. That's why it stands out so much because the contrast is as high as you can get. Not only that, He's decided to include what looks to be a, a fence here from the bottom of the image up into the top third in the middle. So again, a very strong compositional uh, location to put the subject. And so, you know, there's leading lines going into the subject. There's, you know, a use of thirds, there's a use of color contrast. And I think this is just a very interesting, well-balanced image in my opinion. All right, that's it for this video and that's it for the series. Sad face. Thank you so, so much for sticking around for this entire series, the 10 episodes of the Visual Pattern series. I'm truly, truly humbled and grateful for all of the positive responses that I've had throughout this series. It's been such a fun endeavor and such an awesome undertaking and I really hope it helps up your photography game substantially. And while this is the end of this series, leave me a comment down below for you know, the things that are a little bit difficult, a little bit tricky, or maybe even that you want to learn more about when it comes to photography, when it comes to the craft and the art of photography. And who knows, maybe I will make another series or another couple of videos on that and obviously get subscribed if you want to see those in the future as well but for this video i hope you enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one but until then get out there and make something that matters with all of the visual patterns that you are now armed with all right peace